morning everybody today we're gonna do a video on a Kubota R430 loader I've had this for this is gonna be my second season with it I had a uh, Kubota R520 S loader before this I bought used it was an 05 I had that for like I don't know five or six years I, I had a chance to get rid of that, uh, sell it, so I did, and my intention was to go buy a bigger uh, skid steer. The thing I wanted is uh, we lift full pallets of block for retaining walls, even like designer rock and stuff like that, they're heavy skids. Farm tractors I've had over the years will lift them, they'll lift them to move them around your yard or move them around the site, but getting them off of the back of like a one ton dump truck or a trailer the height is what scares you when you're trying to use a farm tractor. That's why I originally bought the, uh, the 520. I went, I, I went to look at skid steers and I was even thinking about buying a new R530. And when we went, uh, the problem I'm having is I'm trying to stay under the CDL, the 26,000 pounds. This is the biggest loader you can buy from Kubota and haul legally with a three quarter ton truck. I do have a one ton Ford. I had a F550 for a while. The problem is, is combined weight. You need a CDL, CDL to haul it. So I try to buy stuff that I can haul with a three quarter ton pickup on my trailer. That way the combined weight's under the 26,000. But like I said, I traded a 520 for this thinking I might have downsized, but I don't know if it's because this is new and that was old. It was a 2005, but it, it only had under 4,000. So it, very tight machine this seems to be as capable as that um, this will do everything I've asked it to do I move logs with it I move full skids of rock uh, block I don't think they get the res recognition that they should um, this will do about anything you ask it to do it lifts almost I, I think 5,000 pounds off the ground but even at four or five feet you can you're still in the 4,000 plus range so as far as loading a whole load of rock or skid a skid of block onto a truck or trail there's no issues at all you can grab um, I have a, saw, a sawmill I use I can grab four 16 foot pine logs with this no it's not even uncomfortable to do it I mean you're not light it's not light on its feet doing it I, I just want to kind of showcase this a little bit we're inside of the cab with a 430 loader. Um, some of the differences between the older, like the 520 I had, um, way more comfortable, less vibrations. Other than that, it's still forward reverse. You've got the high and low range here on the shifter, same as the 520 was. Um, bought the, the low speed's probably three miles an hour. Uh, to, uh, high end, high range is 12 miles an hour things that are different the biggest difference between the old ones and the newer ones is this 430 has air conditioning so when you're on a job site that's dusty in the summer can't have the doors open it, it, the 520 would have I had some uncomfortable days in that because there's sometimes the winds blowing you're on a dusty site you have to have the doors closed so it's nice having the air conditioning this one came with a radio in it um, uh, it works real well I mean it's it's quieter than my other one so you can actually hear the radio other than that, it's the same layout. Uh, it was a 420 and 520 with the original series. They went up to the uh, 430. It's basically the same as the 420. A little bit higher ratings, but it basically has the admissions on it now. That's that's the difference. Other than that, this is the same layout as the older ones, where the 520, when that got replaced, the 630 is a whole new design. This is actually the same design layout as the older ones. It's got the uh, TF4 admissions and air conditioning is basically the difference. A little more comfortable in the cab. They've done a couple little things different. You can see out of this thing real well. I mean, when I, I do some snow plowing with it, you can you can back up and look. You can see it's got ma three different mirrors, which is uh, the other, the 520 had one mirror. So that makes it a little bit nicer. But overall, that's about it for the cab. Another thing I like about these loaders is they're very easy to maintain, uh, to get in areas to service them. I mean, you, these open up pretty well. The whole engine cover comes up. 
but the filters are all pretty easy to get at. Um, air filter, uh, fuel filter, the oil filter is pretty easy. You get it from the bottom, but it's it, these are very, very similar to the older uh, 420s and 520s, as far as that goes. It just has the new admission stuff on it. But I wanted to show that. Another thing I like about the Kubota load is, is these will do work in tight areas. This will do a complete uh, circle within, uh, I believe it's 10 feet, one inch. But you'll find like if you're loading trucks and there's a trailer, like once in a while we'll load a truck and a trailer at the same time you're in between them. This is way better than anything else I own as far as loading in on uh, any vehicle, dump, big dump trucks, pickups, dump trailers. So, but we'll show you that right now. show you uh, me lifting stuff with the forks and the bucket but I want to show you Kubota I think rates this at like 4,000 pounds now uh, you know lifting with the bucket uh, it goes away as you go up but I mean as far as dead lifting off the ground it doesn't feel light on its feet at all but I, you'll be seeing that in the video explain with the forks the uh, tipping weight uh, as far as lifting weight is different on the forks because it's it's further away from the uh, hinge point of the bucket the bucket lifts a lot more like in the high 5,000 you know pound range but I want to show you like digging into a gravel pile or a stone pile you can this is a three-quarter yard bucket full you can it's comfortable lifting it like I said a lot of machines will get light on the back this is very comfortable so I want to show you that this is it will comfortably load a trailer um, you, you can stay 20 something inches away and it will still dump into the trailer this is normally about as close to some a trailer that I get to load the height is seven foot two inches that you can go over a board and dump this will load up to like a 650 or 750 forward with like one board on it, it it doesn't center dump though, it, but it will fill the truck from the side. You just got to go up and it will drop behind the board. Any of my equipment, like my one ton four wheel drive forward, it will center load. It will center load these trailers. But I just wanted to show this because some people might question whether this will load. This isn't going to load like a 10 wheeler or a tri axle um, that's got a real high side. That's when you got to jump up to that next series. But I just wanted to show this in the video.
the thing with this loader is it came through 47.6 horsepower, I believe. I was a little worried when I bought it about the horsepower, um, but I found this does everything that I've ever asked it to do with no hesitation. I mean, it's more than enough power for this size unit. A couple other little things compared to like the 520 was very difficult to strap down to your trailer with chains because there was no hook points. You had to, I had special straps that went over the axles because I don't like scratching the paint all up on new, you know, any equipment. But this one here come through, it's got hook points so then when you get ready to put it on your trailer, so you got chain hook, you know, place hook chain there. They added these in the back, which you think it's, it, it actually saves you half the time when you get ready to load this on at the end of the day. Another thing I want to add about uh, this loader is I was on a job site this spring with it, working with another guy with a good size, he had a good size Volvo machine, I gotta admit it was bigger than this, but he jokingly said to me one day about, you know, f the fuel cost in New Hampshire right now is kind of crazy. So he basically put a hundred dollars in, a hundred gallons in that morning, I believe it was like $335 worth of off-road diesel he put in that. So he asked me what I use in this, I said it's a 14 gallon tank and I can normally go two days of running with it. And he laughed, thought I was joking. And I'm going to say that's something no one understands with this small equipment. This is pretty capable. The, the, the cost of ownership is probably better, but just these things will, this will do a pretty good amount of work in a day for the size of machine it is. I'm going to end the video with basically my experience with this has been awesome. Uh, I would suggest this to anybody that was looking for a loader. If you're a landscape companies, most of them are loading one ton trucks. You know, in my area, it's one ton trucks. This will load anything into a one ton truck. I believe it would load most 650s unless they had a real high board on them. But it's very capable. It's something I just wanted to put this information out there because it wasn't a lot when I was looking on the 430. Um, I just wanted to make sure everybody is, gives us a you know a chance when they go to look at a skid steer, check out one of these and. But a lot of the places will let you dig out back and play around with it, but I, I believe people would choose these more if they gave them a chance um, over a skid steer. That's my experience. So, but, but I'm open if someone has comments, good or bad, I'd like to know, if, you know, maybe I missed something if you can add. But I, I just wanted to get a video out there that I'm super impressed with this thing. Another bonus thing uh, I found this spring by accident this is the bucket off my MX 6000 uh, Kubota tractor I had the forks on it up here one day had to load a truck this was sitting there because I, uh, something else was on the uh, MX that day so I said I'll just use that bucket what I found when I put it on is this bucket almost tips perfectly flat so when you're moving stone or something you're worried about like if you're going any distance and it's bumpy you don't tend to lose the stone out of something that sits flat I also think this is going to be nice if once in a while we'll do a job where you got to mix a few bags of concrete. It, you know, this is going to work out good for stuff like that too, but I just wanted to show you. Uh, so this is the bucket off the MX-6000. It's a serial number L2296. It's a Kubota bucket. Um, this, I ordered the loader with a three-quarter yard bucket. I, I believe this is a little less than a half yard bucket. Um, well, like I said, fire is moving stone. Like we find sometimes we have to dump the stone to put behind a, a retaining wall away from where we're building a wall. So you got to go across someone's dooryard, you know, without dropping rock all over their grass or whatever you're driving across. So th this is going to be a nice addition, I think. Now I know that. I may even look to see if I can get, uh, next time I go to a Kubota dealer, I think I'm going to go... If they got one of these on site, I'm going to ask them if I can put a bucket and explain why. I, I may go with like an oversized bucket. Some of my tractors I've gone, um, the MX came, I like this bucket from Kubota. Before that, most of my tractors I ordered with a Woods aftermarket bucket. Years ago, to, to get on, to, to get a bolt on cutting edge and all that, most of the time they put a Woods bucket. Um, it's a company, I, I believe they're still in business, but it was a Woods, what they call heavy duty bucket. I'd always get pay a little extra to get that versus the Kubota bucket. It was normally a little bit bigger, a little bit heavier built. Bolt-on cutting edge was already on it. Now Kubota's kind of all their buckets come through the same way. This is a very well built. I still may put like an uh, an addition on this just so stuff don't fall off the back. I do that to most of mine. But I, I just thought that was cool. I, I wanted to show people.